Hallelujah. You are worthy, Father God. You are worthy to be praised, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day that you have given us, Lord Jesus, this opportunity once again to be in your presence, Father God, lifting your name, lifting your name on high, Father Lord. There is no one like you, Lord Jesus. There is no one, there is no one like you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity that you have given us. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to be here in your presence, Lord Jesus. You are worthy to be praised, Father God. There is no one, there is no one, there is no one, there is no one like you, Father God. There is no one, there is no one like you, Father God. We rebuke and we cancel out, Lord Jesus, anything that does not come from you, Father God. I just ask you, Lord, that your presence be felt, Father God. I just ask you, Lord, that you open up every ear, that you open up every heart, every eye, Father God, for the glory of your name, Lord Jesus, that we may be able to, to worship you freely, that we may be able to accept the word that you have set aside for us today, Father God, for the glory and the honor of your name, Lord Jesus. I give you thanks, Father God. I give you thanks, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Father God. Yes, Father Yes, Lord. Hello? Proverbs 3. Thank you, Lord, for the word. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life, and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as the father the son in whom he delights. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your hands up. I want you to lift your hands up and just worship God. Just a minute. Please. 45 seconds. Exalt his name. Just for 45 seconds. Just praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Worthy are you, Father. Worthy, Lord Jesus. I give you thanks, Father God. You are glorious, Lord Jesus. There is no one like you, Father God. There is no one like you, God.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy are you, Father God. Worthy are you, Father God. I'm going to ask you guys to just share the page. God bless you this evening. I hope and pray that these songs will continue to minister to you. I hope and pray that these songs serve to you a blessing for this next week as you are about to uh, it, uh, confront or you're about to face this new week starting tomorrow. I hope that God continues to bless you. I hope that God continues to protect your family from all harm, from any sickness, for the glory and the honor of the name of Yahweh, for Yeshua, the Holy Spirit. Father God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Yes, Father God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord.
Father. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy, Father God. You are worthy, Father God. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Father God. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. There is no one like you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy, Father God. You are worthy to be praised, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you, Father God, for this day. Thank you, Father God, for this day that you have given us. You have allowed us to be here in your presence. I just ask you, Lord Jesus, that you bless every single person that is listening to the service. Father God, I just ask you, Lord, that you protect them, that you bless them for the glory of your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for everything that you have done. Thank you, Father God, for everything that you will continue to do in our lives, Father God. Let your perfect will be fulfilled this evening, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you guys tonight. God bless you. I hope that God continues to bless you. I hope that God continues to show you favor this evening for the glory of your name. Tonight, we're going to be, uh, we were blessed earlier this morning uh, by uh, Pastor uh, Carmen's message. The Lord used her beautifully. Uh, we, we ask that the Lord continue to use her, that the Lord continue to bless her for the glory of his name. Tonight, we're going to be speaking about something a little bit different. The Lord had placed in my heart a couple days ago, and, and I wanted to share it with you guys this evening. Lord, I, I just ask you, Father God, that you bless us. I ask you, Lord, that you fill us. I ask you, Lord, that you pass a burning coal over my lips. Father God, that what I speak today, Lord Jesus, come from you, Father God, and no one else, Father Lord, for the glory of your name, Lord Jesus. Uh, I ask you, Father God, that you cleanse my soul, that you cleanse my heart, that you cleanse my mind, that you cleanse my tongue, my lips, Father God, my steps, my walk, my hands, Father Lord, for the glory of your name, Lord Jesus. Let your perfect will be done, Father God, tonight, Father Lord, for the glory of your name, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord, that you use me, Father God. Fill me up, Lord Jesus, and empty me, Father God, as you please, for the glory and the honor of your name, Lord Jesus. I ask that you do this thing, Father God, for your glory, Lord Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Father God, you are glorious, Lord Jesus. We're going to be reading from the book of Psalms quickly. And then we're going to be jumping all over the place. Psalms chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34, verse 18. Psalm chapter 34, verse 18 says, For Yahweh is near those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yahweh delivers him out of them all. Father God, I give you glory, Lord Jesus. Once again, Father God, we come before your presence. I just ask you, Lord, that you have your perfect will this evening. I just ask you, Lord, that you touch every single one of us. I ask you, Father God, that you bless us, that you fill us, Lord Jesus, that you anoint us for the glory of your name, Lord Jesus, that you remove from us any impurities that need to be removed, Father God, for your glory, Lord Jesus. For your glory, Father God. 
I ask you, Lord, to do this thing. Amen, 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 amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are glorious. You are glorious. You are glorious. Tonight, tonight, tonight we're going to be speaking of, uh, of brokenness. Tonight we're going to be speaking of brokenness. This is a, 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 a theme that the Lord had, had placed in my heart uh, earlier this week. Actually, I actually, I actually think it was at the end of the service on Sunday. I had asked the Lord, Lord, what is it that you want me to speak about next week? And, and the Lord said, gave me one word, brokenness. We know that the church is filled with people that are broken. We know that this world is filled with people that are broken. I mean, broken for so many different reasons, right? Everyone can be broken for different reasons. I could be broken for bad decisions. I could be broken for unanswered prayers. I could be broken by my circumstances. I could be broken by life. Someone could break your heart. Someone could break uh, your emotions. Someone can break you down as a human being. I, there are so many reasons in which people are broken. You know, that's one of the main reasons people come to the Lord. People come to God because they're broken and they want to be fixed. People come to God in hopes that God can fix the problem that's in their life. They come to God hoping that God can touch them. They come to God hoping with the expectation that the fulfillment of his promises in the word of God, in the Bible, will actually come to fruition in their life. We, we lean on God in hopes that God hears us. We lean on God in hopes that God, uh, in hopes that God can transform and change a situation that we're in, circumstances that, 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 that we're not happy with or situations where we're just not pleased in. So many different reasons why we come to God for so many different things, right? In, in the book of Jeremiah, it talks about the potter's clay. It talks about how we are vessels in the hands of a potter. God asking Jeremiah the question, like, like as if it's rhetorical. Could not Israel be like the clay in the potter's hand? And can I not be the potter? Asking these rhetorical questions, like, it's almost as if God being the gentleman that he is, he's asking the person, he's asking the believer, he's asking you tonight, if you allow him to treat you like a vessel of clay. Right? But, but, but the idea isn't that you allow God to mold you and touch you to fix your brokenness. The idea is that you remain in the hands of the potter forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's God's plan for humanity. That's God's ultimate desire for all mankind. You don't want to come to God because you feel broken and you need to be fixed. You want to stay in the hands of the potter so that the potter can continue to mold you, so that the potter continue, can continue to use you, so that the potter can continue to form you. Look at how that scripture says. You know what, what's so interesting is this word potter means to form, to fashion, to frame, to determine, and to purpose. And it's funny because when, God, when you are in the hands of God, I don't know about you. I don't know if this has happened to you, but certainly for me. When I feel as if I'm in the hands of the Lord, I don't know if I'm coming or I'm going. It's almost like I feel like I'm being squeezed, but at the same time, I feel like I'm being spread thin. Or does that, 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 that must only happen with me. That must only happen with me. It happens with a lot of us. It happens with many people. That's why many people leave the ways of the Lord. The Bible says the parable of the sower, we spoke about it on Tuesday. The parable of the sower, the Bible says that, 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 that some of the seed fall among thorns and thistles. And then all of a sudden the cares of this world, the worries, the, the, the pressure of this world come and, and attack them and, 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 and take the best of them and they leave. They, 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 they cannot be fruitful because the cares of this world, they, they, they're, they're swallowed by them. They're suffocated by these cares. They're suffocated by the worries of the world. They're suffocated. But, and, and it's interesting because, you know what? You, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? When we talk about being broken, you know, bro being broken is not being the way you used to be. And, 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 that's, and that's such a... There's so much irony in that statement. Because we come to God. We serve God. I mean, how, you can be with the Lord. You can have served the Lord 
for years and years and years. You could be serving him. You could be faithful. You could be tithing, offering. You could support your local church. You could do all these things, right? But there's still an emptiness. There's still a void. There's still a sense of brokenness inside of you. And as I was meditating on the message, the Lord had just continued to minister to me about this term and about this word and phrase that, that there are too many, there are just too many believers that are broken within the church. And the Lord allowed me to understand that one of the main reasons that brokenness can't be fixed inside the church is that there are too many believers within the church that are insecure. See, insecurities, you, it, when you're insecure, you mask your insecurities with the fact and the, with, 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 the, with the mirage that there's stability in your life. You hide your insecurity behind a facade of stability. You hide the fact that there is nothing wrong with you, but inside, you know, deep down, you are still broken. Now, whatever it may have been, it may have been that circumstances in your life, unanswered prayers in your life, bad decisions, other people, life choices, whatever it may be, you still find yourself broken. So the question is, what are you not allowing God to do in your life? That's why God asks Jeremiah the question, the rhetorical question, would you not allow me to be the potter and you be the clay? Would you allow me to break you in your brokenness so that I could fix your brokenness? Would you allow me to do this thing? See, there are so many people in the church that are broken. And it's evident in their insecurities. It's evident in their fits of rage. It's evident in their immaturity. You could always tell a broken person by their insecurities. You could always tell a broken person by their immaturity. Their lack of wherewithal. Their their lack of sense. Their lack of logic. Their lack of importance. But you got to allow God to break you even in your brokenness. You got to allow God to control you even in an environment where you think it can't be controlled. See, God, let, let, let me, let, we, we, I say this tons of times, but God doesn't do the possible in your life. He only operates in the impossible. You think you can fix your brokenness, but it's only through God that can fix your brokenness. But in order to fix your brokenness, he needs to completely break you. It's almost as if you're holding on for dear hope. You're holding on for dear life. Holding on to that remnant. Holding on to that last glimmer of hope. Holding on to those uh, empty promises. Holding on to those feelings of satisfaction. Of feeling like you were loved. Of feeling like you were being cared. But God is saying, I need to fix your brokenness. And in order for me to fix your brokenness, you need to forget about everything that happened to you that made you broken. But God... Those were moments in my life where I felt complete. But God, those were moments in my life where I felt like I was loved. Loved and complete doesn't leave you broken. Love and complete leaves you whole. And if you're feeling incomplete and broken, those moments in your life that you felt complete and loved were just really false. It was a farce. It wasn't true. It wasn't real. It was a mirage. And here you are standing before God in the situation that you're in, the brokenness that you're in. And you're asking God, God, I need to feel complete. God, I need to feel whole. God, I need you to fix me. And God is saying, let me break you. The word of God sustained you from breaking. But the word of God is what's going to completely break you. And it's only in the hands of the potter that the potter can make you whole. When you look at this word vessel, when you look at these words, right, all these words symbolize and and, and define something that needed to be broken in order for them to be formed and made whole again. That's the difference between being broken in the spirit and being whole in the spirit. And you need to understand something that when you're broken and whole, when you're broken in the spirit, you're broken in the flesh. And when you're whole in the spirit, you're whole in the flesh. 
those two things work hand in hand. It's almost like you're seeing the fruit of what's being spoken. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that from the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. The heart is what goes unseen. What is heard and what is seen is what comes out of the mouth. So if you're, if you're broken in your spirit, everything in your outward appearance is going to be broken as well. But if, if you allow God to fix you, if you allow God to fix your brokenness, what's going to come out of your mouth is evidence of being whole. What comes out of your mouth is evidence of being complete, is evidence of being fixed, is evidence of being transformed, transfigured, and made whole again. You can't always just be broken and blame the system for your brokenness. God has allowed you to be born into a generation and to be born into a country that he allows you to seek him for him. There's no one hindering you from seeking God. There's no one stopping you from seeking out the truth. What is stopping you? What is holding you back from endeavoring into the unknown of a spiritual realm that God is calling? God is calling on you to do something different, to walk different, to think different, for your perspective to change, for the analysis that you have in your own mindset, for your perspective on life, for the steps that you take to be different. And listen, I'm not only speaking to the unbeliever, but I'm also speaking to the believer. The book of Revelation says, I know your works. I know you mean well. I know you hate the people that do wrong, but you need to understand something. If you don't change and return to your first love, the thing, the very thing that I gave you, the very thing that you worked so hard to obtain, I will take it away from you. So return to the first love of God. Return to that fervor. Return to that vibrant love. You seeking God intimately. You seeking out his face intimately with purpose. Purpose driven. Designed to reach the outer extremities of the blessings of God here on earth. We need to allow ourselves to be vessels and utensils in the hands of the Lord. See, when you are hand when you are a vessel in the hands of God the potter does how he pleases with his clay if he sees fit that you be a cup one season he will allow you to be a cup if he thinks that you need to be a plate another season he will make you and form you into a plate you need to understand that you need to be uh, pliable in the hands of God you need to be flexible under God's will for your life Different seasons cause for different positions and different positions cause for different vessels and different forms and different directions. Man, this was so good. And you know what's funny, what's, what's interesting, and I'm not going to disparage the fact that there are many broken people in the church. Because rightfully so, the church should be filled with broken people. But broken people need to want to be made well. That's why the rhetorical question is asked of Jeremiah. Would you allow me to be the potter to you, O Israel? Would you allow me to fix you? You have strayed, even in the church. You know, sometimes I think that there are more people lost within the church than outside. Yeah, they, they think because they, they, they serve. They think because they tie. They think because they offer. They think that they, just because they do these things and they pray, like Carmen said earlier today, for five minutes, all is well. No, all is not well. The monotony of your daily life has shut the flame off in your life. You need to revive it. Ain't no one else going to revive it for you. You need to do it. He says it. James says it. Revive the flame that is inside of you. You do it. You turn it on. You light it up. I like to think that I, we've created an environment and we've spoken and taught a word that allows the believer to be self-sufficient in times just like this. You know, when, when, when I grew up, it, it was easy for me to be fed. It was easy for me to be let. It was easy for me to do these things because I had a father in which he did all those things for me. He leaves. Now I'm left to fend for myself. 
God's almost as if the humor in God is almost like, so what are you going to do now? You can't call him. Rather than call him, why don't you call me? And that's what we need to understand. And it's okay to have relationships. It's okay to look up to people. It's okay to call me and say, I have a doubt in Scripture. I need a prayer that needed an answer. The Word of God says where there are two or three united in my name, I will certainly be in their midst. I need you to help me pray for something. That's all healthy. That's all well and good. But you can't fix your eyes on me because I will stumble and fail. You need to fix your eyes on Christ, whom is perfect in all his ways. If you want to be fixed, look unto Christ. If you want to be fixed, look unto God. If you want to be fixed, lean on him and not your own understanding. Brokenness. And like I said, insecurities are the most evident characteristics of a broken person. And we all need to understand, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, says that nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered. You know, this, brought, this brings me to mind in Galatians chapter 5. Right? In Galatians chapter 5, let's go there. Let's look, look what it says. Galatians chapter 5, one of my most favorite chapters in all of Scripture. Galatians chapter 5, he mentions a couple things. He, he mentions two things beginning the chapter before I was going to get into what we were going to talk about. And one of is the, is, the, is the need that we are free in Christ. So he's speaking and he's saying, he, and he says to them, because listen, you have to understand something. If you circumcise yourself, now you've become a debtor of the law. Because you circumcise, if you circumcise yourself because of the law, now you need to wholly con you need to take on the entirety of the law. You can't apply just one portion and not apply everything else. You need to do everything else because you applied the one. But you need to understand that you are free in Christ. You are not of the law. You are now of the grace. You are now part of the new covenant. And he says what's the most, the most important thing that you need to understand and the most important thing that you need to comprehend is that the number one law that God has determined and placed and purpose every single believer is that you love your neighbor like yourself. Everyone wants to be treated right. Everyone wants to be treated equally. Everyone wants to be felt empathy. Everyone wants to felt loved and, and to feel loved and to feel appreciated. So if you want these things, it's necessary that you show and pay that forward. You need to be able to reciprocate the love what, that you're desiring. You need to be able to show it to others. So he goes on and says, he, he goes on and says in verse 16, walk then in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And you may ask, what does this have to do with brokenness? It has everything to do with brokenness. It has everything to do with insecurities. Because it, l l l let's finish this, let's finish this thought. Look at what he says, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. The insecurities in your life are evident. And I'm going to walk down every single one of them highlighted here in verses in, in, in verse 19, 20 and 21. And every single one of them respond to a piece of brokenness in you. Listen to this. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, Envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. I'm talking about love, 
When there's adultery in your life, there is a, that's evidence of broken love. When there's fornication in your life, that's evidence of broken morals. When there's uncleanliness in your life, that's evidence of broken pride. When there's lewdness, it's broken identity. When it's idolatry, it's a broken covenant. When it's sorcery, it's a broken spirit. When it's hatred, it's a broken love. When there's contention, there's broken relationships. When there's jealousy, there's broken gratefulness. When there's wrath, there's broken power. Passion, when there's self ambition, there's broken teamwork. When there's dissension, there's broken unity. When there's heresies, there's broken choices. When there's envy, there's broken encouragement. When there's murder, there's broken value. When there's drunken, there's broken goals. When there's revelry, there's broken character. Every single one of the characteristics of the works of the flesh are evidence of something broken in your life. You want there to be, uh, uh, you want something in your life to be fulfilled, but the very fact that you can't walk out in it is evidence of your brokenness. Your broken love calls for adultery. Your broken morals calls for you to fornicate. Your broken pride calls you to be unclean. Your broken identity calls for lewdness. Your broken covenant calls for idolatry. Your broken spirit calls for sorcery. Your broken love calls for hatred. Your broken relations calls for contention. Your broken gratefulness calls you to be jealous. Your broken passion makes you angry. Your broken teamwork makes you self-ambitious. Your broken unity calls for dissension. Your broken choices call for a heresy. Your broken encouragement makes you envious. Your broken value makes you murder. Your broken goals cause you to be drunk. And your broken, your broken character makes you rebel. But he's saying you need to understand something. You need to understand something. When you walk in the spirit, the things you used to do, you don't no longer do. That's why he's saying you need to understand something. You need to walk in the spirit because you have to understand that your flesh battles your spirit and the spirit battles the flesh. These, thing, these two things are contrarian. They're contrary to one another. Your flesh wants to do one thing. Your spirit wants another. Right? This word lust simply means the desires. Right? But when you walk out, when you walk out in the spirit, the Bible says that that word walk indicates and is defined by the uh, is, is defined as as complete, as whole. You can't walk out in the spirit while you're still broken. You can't walk out in the spirit. These are the things that we need as believers. We need to be complete. We need to be whole. We can't allow the enemy to allow us to think that we can go on being broken. That is a lie of the enemy if God's plan in your life is for you to continue to be broken. God doesn't want you to exist being broken because he understands that you can't Fully walk out in the spirit while being broken. You can't function at full capacity. You can't function at full strength. You need God to make you whole so that you can walk out in completeness. In the fullness of the spirit. Wearing all of the armor of the Lord. Understanding that nothing in creation is hidden from God's sight and everything is uncovered. What do we say? If you are broken, you cannot walk in the spirit. We read the psalm at the beginning. Psalm chapter 34 verse 18 says that the Lord is near those that are brokenhearted. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says, come to me those that are tired and heavy laden. Listen to this. Let's go there real quick. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Listen to what it says. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden. 
and I will give you rest. This is fun. This is fun. This is fun. Galatians chapter 5, you have to understand that the law creates a debt. The law creates bondage. But yet, but yet love fulfills the law. That second word, labor, labor is just tired. You're tired of life. You're tired of work. You're tired of, 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 of the result of everything that's been going on in your life. So God says, Jesus is saying, come to me, those that are tired. If you're tired, come on down. I will give you strength. If you're tired, come on down. I will give you the force. I will give you encouragement. I will fill you up. I will renew you. I will renovate your life. Come to me if you're tired. Heavy laden, this is the fun part. Listen to what heavy laden means. Heavy laden is a load or a burden because of rights and warranted precepts. Heavy laden is if religion and those that are religious have got you tired and discouraged you from seeking the Lord. So when Jesus is saying to those people that have been under bondage and under, uh, 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 it's almost as if they've been slaves to the law, under the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Jesus is saying, that, yo, if you're heavy laden, if these precepts, of the, if these dogmas and doctrines of men have gotten you tired, you need to serve me and forget about them. Come to me, those that are heavy laden. Come to me, those that are tired. And take my yoke. Take my responsibilities. Take my covenant. Take my pact. Take my promise, my covenant, my compromise. It's easy. It's easier than the law. It's easier than what people are trying to make you do. Because that's one thing that we need to understand. You need to understand that God doesn't operate everyone the same way. He doesn't paint using the same brush each person's life. What's difficult for me isn't difficult for you. And what's difficult for you isn't difficult for me. We, we, we have this very bad... We have this very bad habit of applying rules on others because God applied the rule to you. God applied the rule to you because he knows your character. But the character of man is hidden from the sight of man. Because what, is God, what does God say to Samuel? You look at the outward appearance, but yet I look at the inward. The, well, those things that you can't see, the character, the, 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 the makeup of that person, the strengths and the weaknesses of that person, I see them. You don't. So the reason why I gave you rules is because I know your weaknesses, and I know that they need to be covered in a certain manner. So don't assume that he needs to be applied the same things that I gave you. Too quick to press doctrine on people. And all God is asking you to do is preach the word of God. Preach it. Go from there. Allow the, allow the cards to fall as they may. But when this word, when it says, when he says in Galatians chapter 5 that it's necessary for you to walk out in the spirit. Walk out is to regulate because God is going to regulate your steps. God is going to regulate your conduct. God is going to allow you to make process. And you're going to have to pass on your own life. As in, I don't want to live. What does he say? What does the word of God say? I no longer live. Christ lives in me. So my desires, my wants, my cares, my worries, my anxieties, my strengths, my weaknesses, I don't have them anymore. I give them on to God. I give my worries and cares and my burden and my baggage to God. And this, th th I, I, I like this because listen to this. Listen to this. We know that in Luke chapter 10, God says that, Jesus says that I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Right? This word trample, this word trample is one of the root words of the word walk. And walk is essentially speaking of your conduct and your, uh, the, the ability to make progress in your life, or, or in other words, to advance to progress, to press on, but it also means tread and traction. So the same word used in Luke chapter 10 when he says, I give you authority to trample, that word trample is the same root word found in the word walk. 
and trample is to treat something with insult and contempt. But it's also, listen to this, it's also meaning to find success from the greatest perils in the schemes of persecution of Satan to try to thwart the gospel in your life. What in the world? That's what trample means. That's what walk means. So when you walk in the spirit, what you are doing is you're trampling and you're insulting what the enemy is trying to do in your life. There are times in your life for you to walk and for you to be patient and for you to wait on God. But there are other times that you need to step out and that you need to walk, trampling the very plan that the enemy tried to put in front of you. He wants you to fail, he wants you to fall, and he wants you to be insecure. But Jesus is saying, your insecurities need to stop. Your fears need to stop. The fact that you're broken and your continued brokenness needs to stop. These things need to cease. They need to come to an end. You need to come to the realization that I came to fix you. And not temporarily, I came to fix you forever. God isn't offering you band-aids. God is offering you new limbs. God isn't offering you a fix-up. God is offering you to be fixed, for you to be regulated, for your conduct to change, for you to be transformed, renewed, for everything of the old to do it, to die, and for everything that God has promised you to come. So that's why he says in Matthew chapter 11, come to me those that are tired, come to me those that are laboring, uh, those that are laboring and, and heavy and, and, uh, and heavy laden. And I will give you that rest. I will give you those things that you need. I will give you those things. But you will have to allow God to finish breaking you. You have to allow God to break your brokenness. You have to allow God to break your brokenness. You can't continue to hide by the facade of stability in your life. You can't continue to hide behind the grease. You can't continue to hide behind a shirt and a tie. You can't continue to hide behind a suit. You can't continue to hide behind a mask. You can't continue to hide behind the veil, behind the curtain. God sees your brokenness, and your brokenness is evident by your insecurities. Your brokenness is evident by your outbursts of wrath. Your brokenness is evident by your envious ways, by your slandering. All these things are evidence of being a broken person. And God's desire for you isn't that you're broken. God's desire for you is to be whole. God wants to fix you. But the question that you need to ask yourself tonight is if you want to be fixed. What does he ask the cripple? Do you want to be made well? He didn't heal him. He asked because we need to understand that God still is going to ask us if he want, if he, if we want to be removed from the situation in which we're in. You know, it's funny too. How many people are out without a job? But if you ask them if they want to go back, some of them say no. Because they're getting paid more now than they were before. So they're like, Lord, extend this a little bit more. But sometimes that's how people are in sin and in their brokenness. They enjoy the pity. They enjoy the comfort. They enjoy the, are you going to be okay? They enjoy the verses that lift them up, that supposedly encourage them. They like these things. They like to be noticed. And people that like to be noticed are all, is only a mask of their insecurities. They feel the need to be seen, so they cry wolf. But that's really just evidence of being broken. God is saying enough of the being broken. Let's, why don't you walk out in the spirit? Why don't you understand what it is to have the fruits of the spirit? Why don't you understand how it is to not allow the flesh to conquer the spirit in you? We all have to understand that there is a lying in us. We all have to understand that there is a Holy Spirit in us. If you want God to change the outside, your environment, you're going to have to allow God to first clean the inside, your environment. 
your mind, the battlefield of your mind, those doubts, those questions, those, uh, th those moments of insecurity in your own life, those, that, those moments that you don't share with other people. Those moments that you think no one else knows, those are the things that you need God to cleanse you from. Those are the things that you need God to clean you with. You need to allow God to take that and to remove it from your life so that you can walk out in the spirit. God doesn't want you broken anymore. God doesn't want you broken in this, in this season that you find yourself in, in this season of quarantine. This is your opportunity to be fixed. This is your opportunity to be made whole. This is your opportunity to be completed in the spirit. But even God is such a gentleman that he's allowing you, he's allowing you to be fixed. He's allowing you to be broken in your loneliness. He's allowing you to be broken in your privacy. He's allowing you to be broken when there's no one else in your house. He's allowing you to be broken by yourself. That's how much of a gentleman God is. And he doesn't want you to continue to walk out and broken. Because you can't walk out in the spirit while you're still broke. You need to be fixed. Your acts need to correct itself. Your character needs to change. Your immaturity needs to cease. You, you, you are no longer a child. Like Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke, I thought, I acted. I put away those things. I, I put away my childish, my, my childish demeanor, and I acted like a man of God. I acted like a woman of the Lord. I acted like a woman of God. I acted like a servant of the Most High. And that's not to say that troubles won't come. That's not to say that afflictions won't come. But blessed are those that receive afflictions, that they can compare themselves and call themselves worthy to be a servant of the Lord. God called us for a time just like this. But, the, but being prepared in the spirit is understanding that you're still broken and that you need to be fixed. God is calling out a people. And he is calling out a people to be brave. And bravery requires completeness. Bravery requires being whole. You can't be brave if you're broken. You can't launch out into the depths while you're broken. A vessel and a piece of clay, a cup, a plate, whatever it may be, a tool, an instrument, a utensil, all these things require a process. You can't jump out of the potter's hand if you haven't spent enough time in the oven to bake and harden. And, and, and you need to complete the process. You can't jump out broken. And you can't work broken. You need to be whole. God is calling a people to be complete. He is calling for people to be prepared for a time just like now. Father God, I give you thanks, Lord Jesus, for this day, for this opportunity that you have given us. I just ask you, Lord, that you bless everyone. I ask you, Lord, that this word does not return to you void. I ask you, Lord Jesus, that the, this word that needs to touch and, and, and develop and, 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 and permeate in the lives of those people that need to hear it, Lord Jesus, that you do so for the glory and the honor of your name. Father God, those that need to be saved, let them be saved. Those that need to be touched, let them be touched. Those that need transformation, let them be transformed for the glory and the honor of your name, Lord Jesus. I ask you to do this thing, Father God, for your glory, Lord Jesus. We call and we call away, Father God, and we rebuke all brokenness, Lord Jesus. We call and declare completeness in our lives, Father God. We call and declare wholeness in our lives for the glory of your name, Lord Jesus. I ask you. Thank you, Father God, for everything that you have done. And thank you, Father God, for everything that you will do. Let your will be done in our lives, Father God. Amen. 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 God bless you, Bethesda. God loves you. I ask and I pray that this service and this sermon and this message and this teaching has blessed you. Blessed me. I hope it blesses you. I love you guys. I miss you guys. Bethesda, peace out.